Toy Tractor Times is here with Tim Holker at the 2017 National Farm Toy Show. And Tim is a very well-known Alice Chalmers and Gleaner fan, and he's got a great display out here. Tim, congratulations on placing third at this year's National. Uh, what can you tell us about this display? Yep, uh, thank you, Jason. And uh, I can't take sole credit for this. Me and Brian were worked on this pretty much 50-50. And we were sending pictures back and forth on what we were building and we had to make sure everything lined up perfectly when we set it up because we never got to see it set up before we came here so that's pretty much what made this a lot of fun you know that's great it molds so, so this is a little different not something we see at the national every year it's uh it's a it is a big operation, but it's not set in modern times. Uh, you're a Gleaner fan, and uh, Gleaner's about to celebrate the 95th anniversary in yep. 2018, and you've gone all the way back to the early years of the first Gleaner Combine and uh, shown the way farming was in the 1920s. Right. Uh, we set the, the setting, is, we figured the year 1927 was a good year for this. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on in the field. Uh, I guess we'll start down here. We've got the old um, Reaper and the Binder on yep. the horse drawn. So this guy we have out here, basically we got them side by side with the new gleaner just to do a comparison for drain loss, time, you know, they're demoing about the gleaner out here. You know, it's new innovation. You're just trying to see what it does and show right. new farmers, new equipment. And, so where did you uh, uh, where did you get the horses and the binder? Uh, let's see, the binder and the horses came from Brian. Okay. And uh, he built the binder from scratch out of brass. Very nice. And all the woodwork and he got the horses decorated just about perfect too. Oh. I can't find a fly in them. So. <laughs> and then uh, we got the 1920 style. 1923 was the first year for Gleaner. They yeah. mounted it on the Fortson. Yeah, and before this, there were not self propelled combines, or really any combines, other than big horse-drawn ones out west. Right. Now, this one here, by today's standard, is a mounted combine, but back then, that was self-propelled. Uh, the first gleaner had a gravity flow unload tank, and this one's pretty much like a blower, like a silage blower that unloads this one. Uh, it's mounted on a Fortune Model F. That came out in 1917. And that was the main tractor we used to put that combine on. It looks like you've, is that tractor and the combine all 3D printed, or is yeah. that an Ertl with uh, extra I detail? I redid the whole thing. Wow. So the Ertl fenders and wheels were big on the back, so we, I changed that because the grain tank was too high on my mm -hmm. combine. And now the guy can stand up and look in there to see how much is in there when he's moving it. So. Very cool. And now this is um, something I think is really interesting, like when you go out to the uh, half century of progress. So the combine, very compact, it's job all done in one step. But here, we can see that they have to bind it and put it in sheaves, and then they gotta pick them up and put them in a wagon, and then you need all sorts of stuff, power and belts and different equipment. So what can you tell us what's happening out here uh, with all the uh, threshing? Well, we got, uh, we got the old heart car hooked up to the, it's a Rumley Thrasher. We modeled it off the one that was at the Northern Thrasher show up in Minnesota. I was able to get pictures and measurements off of it. And we got two guys on the wagon feeding the Thrasher. And the heart part's uh, powering that part of it. Yep. And let's see here. We got he, Brian made the Thrasher and the wagon. Yeah, that was a wagon horse drawn? Is that yeah. got the long hitch on it's, it or it's tracker? Got the hitch, you can go either okay. way. So. And, uh, he made that baler too that we're moving on to next year. And uh, there's nobody at the baler. We don't have enough manpower. Okay. So these guys basically will unload this wagon at the thrasher and then they'll move back over to the to baler and then So again, back then balers, you know, you had more of a hay press where you're feeding it in and bailing it out stationary. Yep. And uh, that's now I'm gonna see if I'm good on my tractor history. Is that in a nineteen nineteen Alice Chalmers tricycle yep. tractor or Mm -hmm. yeah. And what I think is really cool, uh, I know that you're a big Alice and Agco fan, is that everything here is Alice Chalmers or Agco related because Alice put their first tractor out in 1919. Rumley, the thresher, became part of Alice, right? I believe in 1929 is when that was. And then uh, Hart Parr is what evolved into Oliver tractors, yeah. and Hart Parr actually coined the term tractor back in 1903. They were the 
first company to say tractor. All right. So lots of good history. And yep, the only thing that wouldn't be would be the Ford seat. That's right. So and the, the Baylor or the hay press, which I can't remember what model it was. And then we've got a Gleaner Baldwin truck. So I'm guessing in the 1920s, the Baldwin brothers or their people are probably directly selling these right out of their factory. Yep, pretty much a garage business. <laughs> Come a long way in 95 years. Yeah. They're still going strong. Tim and Brian worked very hard to kind of have that 1920s period time frame. We've got a car from that time going down the road. We still have people uh, using horses for transportation. And we'll move over here to the farmyard uh, where you can see they're bringing in the straw from the field. And uh, again, there aren't any elevators, there aren't a lot of tractor powered equipment. So what's happening uh, here with the barn? Okay, well, these two guys up by the road, this one here is hooked onto the cable that's gonna lift up the, uh, the claw, pick the hay up in the mow, and then this guy's got a trip rope. When you get it up there, you can pull on that, and then it'll start to slide back, and once that hits its destination, it'll hit a latch and a long hook, and the bales will fall. That's really gonna, cool to see the fort and again this would be a pretty good sized farm having two forts and tractors back then and looks like they got a pretty good sized dairy herd yep and it's not always just one guy's operation sometimes I mean back then the neighborhoods actually work together so. right and it looks like we've got an old uh, style hay rake a dump rake um, sitting here yep that's which Brian reproduction as well usually today we'd see that in the fence row and other displays but here it's actually in use and the windmill also is Brian's too Ooh. he was that's he sent me a little Impressive. video of that with the thing was spinning and he was having fun, you could tell. <laughs> so we can see this is a, a dairy farm along with some beef cattle. And uh, you know, back then farms raised a lot of different animals uh, for their own food and also to sell. Yep. So uh, we'll go inside this barn and I've heard a lot of compliments people going by how cool it was that you know, you, you've got a mini display here. You, know, you don't need two four by eights anymore to compete. And, so you put a lot of detail in here. It's neat how the barns got the cutaway to uh, look inside the mow. You just talked about how they ran that trip rope and, and see that all inside here. So that's the, I guess the framework here for the claw that, that comes along the roof line here and yeah. then back through. And then yeah, it goes all the way down to the floor where there's another pulley. Okay. And that'll go out the front door and hook onto that horse that was out by the road. Wow, that's some good detail. And then uh, again, horse, literally horsepower on the farm, so you got your horse stables, and then uh, also your cows on the other side of the barn. That is some great detail, Tim. Thank you. And I guess we can move over here, uh, and we can see the cows in the yard, uh, drinking water and eating hay. Uh, again, we talked about it, got the pigs too. Yep. And everything back in the day. And these must be the calves. Yep, young stock. Now, what's inside the? Um, I guess this is a barn, or is it a corn crib? Or? Corn crib. Okay. And we just got a pig pen clean to on the side. So. Now, as an Agco fan, I'm guessing this is a new idea spreader in here. It's another brand production. I pull that out for you. All right. Yeah, I'd like to see that. So Joseph Oppenheimer uh, in 1899 invented the manure spreader. Before then, you had to stand in a wagon with a pitchfork, and uh, Oppenheimer was a school teacher. His students were missing a lot of time because they're out cleaning out the barns. So he invented the manure spreader to speed things up and make sure his students were in school. Unless they're doing a show. That is, boy, that's really nice, Tim. Well, I guess we'll come over here, and uh, we were talking about animals. We also got a chicken coop. Where do you get your chickens? Because that's a pretty hard thing to find. Well, Brian worked on them, too. He had a bunch of hanging on. He said, like, well, eat some up. I wondered if there was some pins in them. That's why they're all standing up, because they got needles in them. So. Well, now, uh, why don't we take a look at the house over here? So we're looking at the uh, farmhouse here on Tim's display. Tim, uh, it's a really impressive looking house, and uh, it's got some more detail on the inside of it. Yep, and it, I can't take credit for the house. This house was built by Brian Wirth. He lives in this house, actually, at home. Oh, wow. 
The only thing I did was get the walls laser cut. So. Well, let's take a look at it. Now that's really neat. That's a lot of extra detail work, opening doors and furniture. And it was a lot of fun watching him build this because he sent me a picture piece by piece as he was going. And <laughs> it's fun, a lot of fun. You can see the steps up to the attic, which we just took off the house. And uh, so now there's another level yep. past this one. It's starting to come off a lot easier. Wow, and there's the whole downstairs. Dining room, family room. Look at all that detail. Kitchen. That is some great work. Is there a basement? <laughs> no. <laughs> no basement. <laughs> it certainly doesn't need one though. It's great detail. And I, we can see outside here we got the uh, water pump because this is set in the 1923 time frame. 1927 and, is what we agreed okay. on for a year. So, so we've got the um, water pump. we got the outhouse I'm guessing. Yep. Very nice. See it come back together here. This part ain't as easy. <laughs> it binds up doing this once in a while. detail. I really like the detail of your pond. Uh, you know, they're all over the countryside and uh, oftentimes a big part of the, the farm. And uh, Looks like you got some geese out here, one around the edge and all the cattails. Uh, so how did you, you create this? Well, the, uh, I live in Minnesota, so we got the land of 10,000 lakes and you got to have a pond on your display. So uh, I had leftover silicone mold maker at home and I'm thinking that'll work good for water so let's uh, these are Douglas fir needles actually and they come in leaflets so you can just plug the whole leaflet in a hole instead of poking one by one so that works really good for me and then when you dump the silicone in here that'll hold everything into place. And so do you um, before you put the silicone you kind of carve it out and paint it blue and brown underneath to yep. give it that. And yeah, as you can see here, it's got that brownish and black yep. look to it. And then a uh, little duckweed detail yep. sprayed on top of the... Gotta have that. And I, I like how you kind of have it leached out here in the stack grass. A lot of times on a pond, it's still muddy and wet around the edges. Got some rain. Oh, that's a great detail. Tim, thank you for sharing this farming history and the proud history of Alice Chalmers and Agco through your display. I think it's important to see where we've come from. You know, these are the these were the pioneers back then. We got a lot of conveniences today, and it's just neat to see where it was. And I think that's what's great about model farming is we can capture that history. Absolutely. And just want to thank Brian Ware again. This was a 50/50 effort, and can't forget where all the help came from. So I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Well, thanks for your time and dedication to come out to the show, and uh, I guess you can show us your plaque. Uh, just, again, congratulations on uh, taking third place. It's certainly well-deserved, and people can see the detail that has to go into uh, place at a big show like this. So, congratulations, you guys, and uh, look forward to seeing what you might come up with next. Yep, thank you, Jason. Thank you.